Shown here are the steps involved when a sensor detects movement. Starting at 1 on the far left, a sensor detects motion and wirelessly sends a notification to the receiver. At 2, the receiver closes two external pins with positive 12 volt DC and ground. The positive 12 volt DC wires connected to a relay through the timer. At 3, if the timer determines that the current time falls within the allowed time frame, that signal passes through a closed switch which latches the relay at 4. When the relay at 4 latches, it does two things. One, it supplies power to any surveillance lights and or sounds. And two, supplies the power supply at 5 with 12 volt DC where that signal is stepped down to 5 volts. At 6, which powers up the ESP8266 at 7. Here it's important to understand how the ESP8266 functions. Whenever power is supplied to it, it's like booting it up. It will run the program it's been flashed with. Here the ESP8266 will connect to my router with a request to Google Drive. Google Drive will execute the script that's been identified by the Google Script ID defined in the ESP8266 code. More on that later. The Google Script will issue the text request. Of course there's many alarm systems out there to choose from. I looked at a lot of them and landed on the Guardline GL2000 unit. It seemed to fit my needs and the price was right at $50 for the receiver and the same for each sensor. I used two sensors. I'm sure other units would work fine as long as they provided an external signal when triggered. The Guardline uh, two, GL2000 receiver is not designed to stand up. Mine is mounted on a shelf with about eye level so I wanted the face to be near vertical. You can see the simple stand I cobbled up here. As you can see I also located the timer on the face of the receiver. This view shows the back of the receiver where the external 12 volt DC pins are located. Those pins are miniature versions of, the, of those kind you find in the back of AV units and speakers. I found them to be a little delicate. You need to depress the orange part to open up the jaw, then slip the wire down into it. I found I got the best connection by tinning the stripped wire end. The ESP8266. What a bargain for as little as four bucks. I purchased an ESP8266-12E for about 15 bucks as I had no idea at the time of purchase what I really needed. I also purchased this breadboard and 5 volt DC power supply for about 8 bucks. Here you can see it all assembled in an old screw box I had in my junk drawer. I like to make stuff easy to use both on the bench and in operation. To that end I designed this thing such that I could plug the A-type USB connector into the onboard power supply when in operation, but easily remove, move the unit to the bench by simply disconnecting the red connector which supplies 12 volt DC, and once on the bench, plug the A-type connector into my PC where I can fire up the Arduino IDE, alter and download the code. Assembled, tested, all closed up and ready to run.